beautiful people, family, family, welcome to the Daughter Podcast, a place dedicated to the total wellness of the total woman. My name is Samantha Grimes, and I'm a certified life coach and Christian counselor and the CEO of Samantha Grimes Life Solutions, LLC, a wellness company a wellness company that offers a wide variety of coaching and counseling services. If you are interested in one-on-one or group services, please head to our website at www.sgls.info. Once again, that's www.sgls.info. And we look forward to working with you. My family, if you see me looking funny, I say this every time, but somebody may just be watching this episode and be the first episode that they watched on the podcast. So if you see me looking funny in the video, if you're watching this via YouTube, um, I am looking at my notes to stay on track. As you guys heard that pause earlier, because <laughs> I am looking at my notes at the same time as I'm talking to you. But listen, I am invested. I am here. I am with you. All right, family. So uh, we have kind of changed some things around. And um, first and foremost, uh, elephant in the room, if you're watching, you can see that I am not in my office today. I am filming from my house. Bless the Lord. Um, So this backdrop looks different for you. That is why. And uh, yeah, just wanted to clear that up if you had any questions. (laughs) But yes, uh, we changed things around. And so I'm going to be sharing some goodies, some good, good goodies with you. Um. First, um, at the beginning, before we get into our actual conversation for today. Um, so first housekeeping thing, I actually have a new goodie that I absolutely need to share with you. So do not fast forward this because I have some some new goodies that I want to give to you. But I'm going to go ahead and share with uh, what we, we already know, which is join our membership community. If you have been listening to this podcast or if you've just been following me on social media and you're seeing all the different work that I've done and the different things that the business has going on and you want to be a part of that, you want to grow in a very special way, um, you really want to grow in, in, in daughterhood, identity, development, um, this is the opportunity. This is the place. This is the thing. Okay. Um, daughter membership community. It is a membership community as all around, i.e. being a daughter of God, what that means, what that looks like, the journey we walk through the, the hills and the valleys. And our podcast is kind of a, a, a fire starter. But listen, even if you don't listen to the podcast or you're not big on podcasts, so you kind of listen to podcasts every blue moon, The daughter membership community is still the place for you because yes, we do live Q and A's on the daughter podcast episodes, but listen, we also do, you know, live lessons, Bible studies, group coaching, um, just on the things that go on in the life of womanhood and kingdom womanhood and daughterhood and all that comes with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's the perfect place. It is completely virtual. So it does not matter what city or what state or what time zone that you live in. It doesn't matter your work schedule. None of the things, right? It's 40 bucks a month. And it's the perfect place to just build and become a part of a community of like-minded kingdom women. Listen, you may run into plenty of people in this world, but it's nothing like being in connection with a like-minded individual and especially a like-minded woman as women, um, if you're a woman watching this or listening to this. So I really, really want you to be a part of that. That's my first goodie. My second goodie is I am the author of two books, okay? Both available on amazon.com and Kindle. Okay, the first book is Feel So Good to Be Loved, 21 Days of Discovering the Authentic Love of God. Um, The book is uh, devotional, but it's written like chapters. And man, it digs so heavy and so deep into the journey of what it means to be loved. One of the most powerful quotes, I think I think Judah, Judah Smith said it, I believe it was Pastor Judah Smith or somebody, but I believe it was him was like, uh, The most powerful thing is not about how much we love God, but it's about how much God loves us. And so many of us have no idea what that actually means, how that changes our life, our perspective, how that we proactively need that every single day. How do I receive the love of God? I think I'm receiving. I believe I'm receiving, but you haven't even scratched, you know, the surface and getting that type of head knowledge and heart knowledge and revelation and perspective and letting that transform you from the inside out, causing it to transform your life from the inside out is like nothing 
else. It's nothing elementary about it. And a lot of people hear the love of God and say, well, that's, yeah, Jesus loves me. This I know. And then have no idea how deep, how vast that revelation is and how much you can still be eating and learning on that all this time later. So I highly recommend that book. Um, it's 21 days and it has uh, loaded questions after each day or chapter um, that really that can't be a little triggering, but are exact written there for the purpose of your development, your growth, to change your mindset, to change how you think, which will cause it to you to change how you pray and how you lean on the Holy Spirit. My second book is Significant, Slaying the Demon of Low Self-Esteem and Stepping Back into Your Day one significance. Family, what makes us valuable, what makes us special, what makes us enough, what makes us unique, all of that is not um, not what you think. And sometimes we're find ourselves exhausted working so hard because the world tells you one message, but the gospel teaches you another. And the gospel's message is what's going to set you free. It's going to going to help you overcome. It's going to it's going to do all of the things. And so I highly, highly recommend you get this book and get that revelation. Go head to head with the things because the book goes head to head with the major things that really keep us stuck in that particular place. Right. And so I really want you to get this book to really begin to kind of allow the Holy Spirit to unweave some some knots that have been created and allowing you to really embrace the freedom and the joy of your significance. So I highly recommend those books. Once again, it's Feel So Good to Be Loved, 21 Days of Discovering the Authentic Love of God, as well as Significance, Slaying the Demon of Low Self-Esteem and Stepping Back into Your Day One Significance. And my third goodie is a new goodie. You guys, so we have a signature program called Wife University. Wife University. Listen, it's so exciting. Actually, I haven't done Wife University in about two years. Um, one reason was we had the global pandemic that kind of shifted some things. And then after that, I was launching to other programs. We had Mommies and Dreams. We had, you know, so many other things that we had going on. But the Holy Spirit has decided to, you know, pull that thing back on out. Our signature program, Wife University. Um, if you follow us on social media, you'll already see I share some testimonials and just some different aspects of it. But it is a four week course that is revolutionary. Okay. If you are a wife, if you are soon to be a wife, as in you're engaged, or if you believe God that you're going to be a wife, as in like God, you believe that you're going to get married at some point and you want to be prepared, you want to be ready, then this is the course and the program just for you. It is four weeks. We get into some major conversation and do some work to kind of help really shift your mindset around what it means to be a wife, how to properly walk in that, how to properly do that how to engage um, in that conversation, how to overcome some hurdles that you may be experiencing in your marriage, in your relationship, understanding our PowerPoint, how our, 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 our strength, how, how to pray as a wife. Like there's so many questions and stereotypes and things out there that are just not kingdom and they're not biblical. And God's way is the way that's not only going to set you free, but it's going to set your marriage free. It's going to change the game for you. So many times we want to get married, but don't know what that looks like, what that means. Some of you even had healthy parents who had a healthy marriage. Some of you didn't have a healthy parents with a healthy marriage. And guess what? Both of y'all confused. The person that had parents with a great marriage and the person that didn't. Why? Because just no matter how great their marriage is, your marriage is yours. And it's going to require the Lord to do something new and unique with you. And so I can't, I can't hype this program up enough. We have testimonials of people who have been so blessed, who have been so changed, relationships that have been supernaturally impacted. Um, God does his thing in Wife University. Like Wife U is like nothing else. Okay. Um, and so it is our signature program. We're bringing it back. We're only going to be open until April 30th because the program starts May 1st. Um, And so it's only $90. It's a one-time payment and you're in the program. You know what I mean? Um, You get to participate in everything that's going on. And I recommend this. I, I pray if you don't hear any of my other goodies, you hear this goodie because this goodie, okay, is not that it's just new, but man, it is, it is a game changer for us as Christian women. So I I really want you to take a part of that. If you want to get into it, you want to go ahead. You already know you want to do it. 
Head to our Instagram page at Samantha Grimes TV, go to our link tree and you will see a link that says wife university. Okay. Click that link. It'll take you to PayPal. You'll pay your first payment. Then head to our email. I have this all written in a post on social media. So you might want to just follow our Instagram to have to make sure you don't make any mistakes, but go to follow our, go to our, go, go to our email, samantha.grimescc at gmail.com and write us an email saying done. That lets us know that you have already paid the payment and you've done the process. And so now you're ready to move forward and we will send you the information that, that is required for the next steps of getting uh, access to wife you. So, so excited. Hope to see you there. All right. All right. And um, those are all of our goodies. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this for a second. And we're going to go ahead and open up with glorious prayer. Okay. And then we're going to get right into today's podcast conversation. All right. Also, if you hear anything in the background, it's the evening time. So my kids are home. So you might hear babies babying. Okay. Just, just, just let it on slide. Just let it happen. Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, heavenly father, Lord, we love you so much. You are absolutely wonderful. You are absolutely beautiful. You are absolutely worthy and holy and faithful and timely and wise and perfect in all of your ways. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your voice. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, that there is no one like you in all of the earth. And right now, Father, we invite the Holy Spirit afresh into this podcast episode. God, we are aware. We are fully aware that God, you are already with us, but we know that we can't do anything of real meaning, of real value, of real impact without the spirit of God. So we ask now, Holy Spirit, that you'll lead the charge. You'll lead everything, Father God, that is said and discussed, Father, in this episode. And we'll go where you want us to go. We'll land how you want us to land. And God, I pray now, Father, for your supernatural anointing to rest upon me in a special way. God, anoint my tongue. I submit to you, God, every gifting and anointing that I may possess, Father God. And I just say right now, Father God, go forth. Use me how you see fit, God. Use my tongue how you see fit. God, I submit to you my notes afresh, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I submit my notes afresh to you, Father God, that you may breathe upon them, Father. And I pray let every woman that listens to this podcast episode be supernaturally impacted. Let every woman that listens to this podcast episode be supernaturally blessed, Father God, mind renewed, hearts ignited, uh, a perspective transformed and drawn closer to you. I pray now that you'll get all the glory, all the praise and all the honor and that we'll come back into the greater revelation that we are the beloved of Jesus Christ. We love you. We honor you and we thank you for it now. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all, I'm a little stirred today and it's all right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hmm. Okay. (laughs) All right. All right, Lord. Okay. So family, today's episode is all about kingdom living. Okay. I know you're probably thinking, you know, she's a life coach and stuff. So of course we'll talk about living, but even if I wasn't, this is a conversation we need to have. Okay. Um, hold on laptop. I need you to not do what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So today's topic is all about kingdom living. Okay. And um, we don't understand that many people don't understand or have not realized that kingdom living deals with any and all aspects of your life. Right. When you think of kingdom living, sometimes we we kind of we kind of box it in and we go one direction. Um, but essentially kingdom living kind of is like a overarching or it covers the whole aspect of our life. The Bible says uh, that Christ wants to give us life and that more abundantly. Right. Um. So many different aspects 
are a part of your life. Okay. Your hair is a part of your life. Okay. The food that you eat is a part of your life. Your furniture is a part of your life. The gas in your tank, bless the Lord is in your life. Okay. Um, all the different things. And so kingdom living is going to deal with your finances. Kingdom living is going to deal with your diet. Your kingdom living is going to be how you, your home life, your kingdom living is going to deal with your career. Kingdom living is going to deal with your relationships. Kingdom living is going to deal with every aspect of your life. See, when the enemy comes in, he doesn't just want a piece. He wants to be the landlord. He doesn't want just the room. He doesn't want just the bed. Even if that's what the enemy has to convince you of in the beginning, he wants to take over. Why? Because God is this God. God is made to take over because we belong to him. But when he takes over, everything he touches is blessed. Everything he touches is gold. Everything he touches is holy. Everything he touches is, 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 is it, it, it's like next level. You know what I'm saying? God, God's a multiplier, right? When the enemy uh, tries to take over, uh, now you're in darkness. Now you're in depression. Now you're, you don't know who you are. Now you're struggling. Now you're, you know, it's, it's that constant fight and battle. And so we want kingdom living. Let me just start there. That's, that's something that we desire. That's something that we want kingdom living. I want to live my life for Christ, right? And I want to receive the benefits, the fruitfulness of kingdom living. Why are we talking about this? So many of you, because of different life changes, different mindset changes, different aspects of your evolution, you sometimes can forget about kingdom living. And you know what you're doing? You're just living. You're just surviving. You're just trying to make it. You're just getting from point A to point B. You're just going to work, coming home, just breathing air. Okay. You have completely forgot about the abundance and the fruitfulness and the blessing and the joy that is yours and that you could be having in your life. It's like living in the land of milk and honey and you don't leave your house. You don't drink no milk and you don't eat <laughs> any honey. Okay. So many of us have been there. So many of you, it's not that you've forgotten. You've never been here. Maybe you've been saved for years. Maybe you have known God for eons. But kingdom living has not, you felt like it's not hit your hit your door. Okay. Like the, the great part about counseling and coaching is to help you get to or get back to a place that often we didn't realize the value of until it, we didn't have it. I'm going to say it again. Sometimes you don't really value of something until it's not there in your life. It's not present. And so I want to talk about the different aspects of your life that we need to immediately surrender and let God deal with in order to be back in that place, right? Because kingdom living, again, wants to deal with every act, wants to deal with your mindset, wants to deal with your heart posture, wants to deal with your emotional life, wants to deal with your triggers, wants to deal with, you know what I'm saying, what you hear, what you sense, what you assume about other people and what you think other people assume about you. Kingdom living covers all the bases, okay? Because what, what is, what's special about kingdom living? The king. The king. That, that's what makes it special. That's what makes it valuable. That's what makes it rich. The king. Absolutely. All right. So number one, we talk about kingdom living. The first aspect of really getting back into that place is tapping back into your kingdom authority as sons. This is the thing. And, the, and, and, and what I'm about to say, there's no judgment from me or anybody else, because I think everybody has been there, but we've all either have been, or maybe will be, you know, I'm not prophesying that that's going to be the case, but just, we live in a fallen world. So I, I, I do have a, a, that perspective. Um, I've all been in a place at least once in your lifetime where life was just happening to you. Life was just happening to you. Stuff happens and it just happens. You just beat up on I, I feel like some of you, and I just sense it in the spirit, but some of you listening to, to this podcast episode, you feel like life has been beating up on you a very long time. And it's made you a victim of a lot of things that God has never caused you to be the victim of. He never even wanted you to identify with victimization, 
right? What is, what is victimization? Victimization is the perspective that in everything in your life, you are the victim. See, as long as you take the victim's vantage point, you'll never be the victor. You'll never be the winner. It's like getting in a, a boxing ring. And as soon as you get in the boxing ring, before you take your first swing, you're already expecting them to hit you, you to fall down. If you to tell the story of how they beat you up so bad and you were so helpless, you see, you're not even prepared to punch. You're not even prepared to fight and you're not prepared to be the victor in your life. And so our kingdom authority is so important. Our kingdom authority is so important because God has called us as sons to take authority over our lives. And so many of you know that from a, like this thing, so many of you know things from a, the preacher preached this and it was so good. And I felt so empowered and so ignited and so excited. And then I went home feeling the exact same way I felt before I went to church, right? Because this is not an empowerment sweet speech I'm giving you. I'm telling you the practicalities. That's the thing. Like you, you, you have a real life that you have to live every single day. And as much as there are some deep uh, uh, revelations and aspects of the gospel that we absolutely need to learn and pay attention to, and let it revolutionize our mind. Man, like practically though, what you gonna do tomorrow? Because tomorrow you got to go to work. What you gonna do this weekend? Because this weekend you won't have to be alone with your children. Because they don't have school on Saturday. What are you going to do when you have to be alone at night in the bed with your spouse and you guys haven't liked each other in quite some time? You see what I'm saying? Like the practicalities of your life. So the first aspect of really embracing kingdom living and having it, having that supersede your home in your life. Okay. Number one, you have to take authority back over your life. The Bible talks about it in so many uh, different scriptures and verses and different biblical characters. The book of Esther, Esther became queen, but was scared out of her mind to go to the king alone because it was law that if she went to the king, he could kill her. As a matter of fact, he would, and he would be well within his rights and he can go find another queen tomorrow. And so she got in the presence of God because she understood that I have an assignment and I need to take authority over this situation instead of just sitting here and watching my people be killed. I need to take authority. So how am I going to take authority? I'm going to go and get in the presence of God. I'm going to go and I'm going to fast. The scriptures say some things are only cast out through fasting and prayer. That is an aspect of taking authority over your life. But she took authority over that situation. Why? Because we have it. Like some of you have forgotten why Jesus did what it is that he did. Jesus didn't die because it was cute. Jesus didn't die because he wanted a really great story, triumphant story about him. No, there was an authority that we did not necessarily have the way that we have it now because we are not under the law. We are now under the, uh, the, the New Testament or the dispensation of grace. We're now under Christ. So in Christ, because he died, rose again with all authority, we rose with him. So now we have authority. We have authority in the spiritual realm. And some of you are hearing that and are like, okay, yeah, we have authority, you know, in the spirit realm but my natural realm is 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 on fire okay my natural realm is not doing so great and guess what the spiritual realm is more real than the natural so if you can grab your authority in the spirit you can take that spiritual authority and take it into your natural there's so many things man listen god absolutely wants to do it but he's not going to do it without you hear me god loves you but he's not going to do it without you. He died. He gave you the authority. He gave you the empowerment. And now it's time to walk. Faith without works is dead. Take authority over your life. Take authority over your mind. Take authority over your emotional life. Take authority over your day. Take authority over your physical house. Take authority over your car. Take authority over your gas tank. Take authority over your relationships. Get in the prayer room. The Bible says, Believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. Some of us, and I don't know, I'm going here, but I'm trusting the Holy Ghost. Some of us in your prayer life, you're praying, but you're praying void of faith, which means you're praying prayers, but you don't believe anything that you're praying. 
And because you don't believe anything that you're praying, you're not even saying, God, I'm having a hard time believing this. Can you help me? The Bible, you know, scriptures say, you know, help my unbelief. No, you're just, you're just going through the, the routine of prayer, you know, but you're not praying in faith and saying, and asking God to help build that measure so that you can pray in faith even the more. And maybe you didn't know that. Well, I am so glad you heard this because this is an opportunity to now have that information. Listen, sometimes you got to pray in faith and then leave the, you got to leave the prayer closet. Like you believe what you just prayed in that prayer closet already happened. That's a kingdom man or woman. And that's kingdom living. That's kingdom living. I left the prayer closet and I took what I believe that I got there and I took it into my life. And I see, see, this is the thing. Believing something is one thing, but faith is an action word. I can believe it all day, but when I go about and live my life, like I believe that it's true. Oh, oh, that changes everything. That changes everything. When I go into my job, believing that it's going to be different because of what I just asked God for in the prayer room. And I believe that I already received it. When I go into my relationships, treating my spouse or treating my friends or treating whomever differently because I believe in what I just asked God to do in my heart and in their heart in that prayer room. Those are signs of faith. Those are things that God can breathe on, back up, the angels in heaven will war on behalf of. Those are the things that, are, those are moments of taking authority. Listen, just being honest, some of us, when we weren't saved, y'all was hood. Y'all were ratchet. Y'all were, um, um, could nobody touch you? Could nobody mess with you? And then now that you're saved, what happened? Because guess what? When you were in the world, you didn't have no real power. You were all bark and no bite. You were, you, you had nothing. But now you have all the power, all the authority, all of heaven, all of these angels backing you up. Why aren't you taking authority over your life? Some of you, the enemy has tried to bog you down with fear, with terror, with nervousness. The enemy has tried to bog you down with your emotional life. The enemy has tried to scare you into a place that you won't take authority. And then when you too take authority, you exhaust yourself. That's another aspect. What do I mean by exhausting yourself? I mean, you literally like are constantly beating at the devil and God is not calling to a life where you're sw- you already won. So what he's calling you to is I'm going to take authority and and I'm going to rest is what I'm going to do because I'm a son. That's it. There's a a preacher. I think his name is Bill Winston. My husband quotes this all the time because he doesn't live his life. Devil conscious. I've talked about it in a previous uh, podcast episode. He doesn't live his life. Devil conscious. When the enemy comes, he just pulls the trigger and he continues to live and enjoy his life. Because guess what? God, the reality that God called him to live is more real to him than whatever a scare tactic or, or lie that the enemy is trying to present. So number one, you want to tap back into kingdom living. Tap back into your authority in Christ Jesus. Go into the word of God and begin to read scriptures on authority. Ask God for fresh revelation. Ask God for faith in that thing, faith in your prayer, and then get up and walk. Get up and walk. Guess what? You're going to have to do it before you feel like you can. You're going to have to do it before you feel like it works. See, the the, the aspect of freedom is that freedom is not contingent upon how you feel. Freedom is not contingent upon what it looks like. Freedom is not contingent upon. None of that is any of your business. No, I believe God. I trust in the Lord. That's it. He takes care of all of that for me. Once um, I've told the story a million times, but I feel like I've told it more so to my clients than on these episodes. But if you heard it before, just give me grace. But my daughter, when she was about three or four, but I think she was three, um, we were in Atlanta visiting family and um, we were leaving the hotel. And, you know, these large uh, buggies that they, they give you to put your book, put your bags on. Um. 
we were trying to push it out of the elevator and Gabriella took both of her hands and she pushed it and she pushed it and the thing was moving. And so it looked like from the outside that Gabriella was like a super baby and has all this strength. And she didn't know that on the other side, my husband was actually pushing it, doing all the heavy lifting. And some of you, you take an authority it's in your feelings. It feels like you're using all your might, but in reality, you're, you're the Gabby. Okay. Because God is like, if you take the first step, I'll take the next 15. I'll do the heavy lifting. I'll partner with you. But what did he always say to each person that Jesus healed in the scriptures? Your faith has made you whole. What is the greatest sign of faith? Faith without works is dead. Believe. Talk like you know. Walk like you know. Think like you know. Take authority over your mind. Start rebuking things. Take cap. The Bible says, take captive every thought that exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ and cast down all vain imaginations. That's a daily prayer. Take your mind back. Take your emotional life back. I don't need to argue with you. Stop arguing with the devil. I don't need to argue with you. I'm taking authority over my life. That's the first aspect of kingdom living. The second aspect is kingdom standards. Okay. This happens really often. Really, really often. Really, really, <laughs> really often with many people in the kingdom. And it's, you know, all love, you know, we've all been there. I've been there. I know you've been there. I know grandmama has been there. I know grandpapa has been there. I I, I, I know. Kingdom standards sometimes drop. Why? Because you have forgotten your why. Now, don't fear forgetting things. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will bring all things to our remembrance. So as soon as you forget, sometimes that nudge or that direction the Holy Spirit is leading you is because he's pushing you back. And if you ain't get it that time, he's going to keep pushing until you get it. So no worries. But so for some of y'all, this is the way the Holy Spirit is reminding you. Okay, there are some standards that why? Why are these standards? Why do they even exist? Let's take it back to the Old Testament. The Old Testament, the law was presented. Okay. The law was presented. The law was presented. Why? For the purpose of one, they needed to understand what sin was. See, but prior to the law, they didn't have a grid for sin. So they could just do anything, but there was no law saying that they shouldn't or they couldn't. Now, my husband preaches this a thousand times better than me. Okay. Um, but that's why the law originally existed. Now, the problem is when you introduce the law, it opens the door to all the things that you don't want to do. And what that means is the law says thou shall not murder. And now because you now know what murder is and that it's a sin and that you shouldn't do it. Now you have the burning itch to go kill somebody. That's how the law works. That's why we thank God for Jesus. Okay. That's what we thank God. Thank God for the, uh, the dispensation of grace. Okay. Because now you got the Holy Ghost. You got help. You have, you have that. And so with the Holy Spirit's help, i.e., God has presented, presented standards. Thou shall not kill is a standard. Thou shall not lie is a standard. What you watch on TV is a standard. What you listen to in your music library is a standard. It's not legalistic or religious. I am not going to preach you don't listen to secular music. I'm not going to tell you don't watch a good, fun, loving show. I'm not, no, but, but again, you have the Holy Ghost that's going to ignite that standard within you. It's going to ignite that standard within you. Why? Because if you drop the standard, it's going to affect your kingdom living. It's going to affect your freedom. It's going to affect your peace. It's going to affect your joy because of what you are now letting enter into your mind, what you're letting enter into your spirits, the certain the kind of conversations that you're having. Like you understand, these things are in play, not because... God is a big old meanie who doesn't want you to have any fun. No, he's protecting you from what will be harmful to you. There are standards for my kids. Why? Because they're babies. And if I don't put this standard in play, you will, it could hurt you or you can hurt yourself. 
My daughter not being allowed to be too close to the stove when I'm cooking is a standard. Why? Because Gabby has already attempted to burn herself on the stove. It's hot. So baby, no, you're not ready for this. My son, we have to have boundaries because he, he's a baby. He'll just walk into anywhere, anything, because everything is a toy to him. Everything is something that he can possibly put in his mouth. He is a baby. That is so normal. And so there are standards in play. Some of you have let the standards in your life begin to diminish and fall. And it's not that big of a deal anymore. It's not that important anymore. I don't see the point. And then now you want to know why you're entertaining some of the warfare that you're experiencing and why you're not enjoying the life that God promised you. Where are your standards? Why is it okay to watch a show full of profanity? Why is it comfortable to let a show full of profanity play while you sleep at night? Why is it okay to entertain certain conversations? Why is it now comfortable to gossip? Why is it now comfortable to have sex outside of marriage? Like all of these things, I'm going to just keep it, keep it real with you, are, 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 are beneath your standards as a citizen of the kingdom are beneath your standards as a woman of God, beneath your, st- and you know why it's going to affect the quality of your life. Not anybody else's, yours. Now you're struggling in areas you never struggled in. You're having a hard time in areas you've never had a hard time in. Like what, what's happening? What's going on? Well, you let the standards drop and that affected your kingdom living. That affected the peace and the joy that God wanted you to have. And I'm not saying that if you're walking in the ways of the kingdom, that the enemy is not going to try it, but the, the, the power that he has, the opportunity, the foothold that is presented when we're living outside of the jurisdiction in which God has given us for our point, for our peace, our joy and our contentment. You understand it's for his glory, but it's for our good. The Bible says that for freedom's sake, he set us free. Meaning his entire agenda. There was no secret agenda behind it. No, I want to set you free because I want you free. I want you to experience my love because I want you to be loved. I, I want you to experience my joy because I want you to have joy. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's the word of God. So understand that kingdom standards. Women of God, people of God. That's, that's, that's your bread and your butter right there. The next aspect I want to hit on is kingdom relationships or community. Community is essential. It is essential to the lifestyle of the believer. You need to be around somebody. Okay. You need to be around people. You cannot be a hobbit and grow. You cannot be a hobbit and mature. You cannot even be a hobbit and heal. I know some of you have been through hard things. And so it just feels safer to just go in your little hole and, and, and never be around people again. And I promise you, you're not healing. You're retreating. And what does the enemy thrive in? In darkness and privacy and secrecy. Yes, go have your intimate time with the father. There's nothing like it. But outside of that, there are some things and some people that God have put in place for your healing, for your maturity, for your development, for your growth. And just how the Bible says bad company corrupts good morals. So just how there are great people that are are designed to help you grow. There are people that are not so hot. (laughs) They're still his children and he still loves them, but he's fully aware. Oh, I I know what my son and my daughter going through. I'm not new to this. Some of you, the reason why your kingdom living has been affected is because who you have connected with. It's not because they're an imperfect person, but they're not have, they don't have the same pursuit as you. They're not pursuing Christ. They're not pursuing growth and health and development. And so they're starting to slowly pull you backwards. And you're starting to slowly pull away from the things that were benefiting you, maturing you, strengthening you, straightening your back. Your kingdom relationships are important. Now, I've done an entire episode on on friends and inner circle. So I'm not going to go down that circle. You can go ahead. I think it's episode two. Go ahead and listen to that. and That'll get into all those details. But your kingdom relationships and your community is so vital. It is so important. And some of you need to get back amongst the community. 
You need to get back amongst kingdom relationships. Even if you only have one or two friends who you know are really going after it, man, like, like plan a lunch. Talk to them after church. Call them on the phone. Let iron sharpen iron. Listen, every time I go out with one of my sister friends, I'm telling you, I don't even realize how much I needed it. But before I have it, I'm just like, oh, yeah, we're just going to go have lunch or we're just going to go, go do this thing and it's nothing for me. And then when I'm with them, I come, I leave feeling so sharp and so refreshed. So like, oh, gosh, I needed I needed this. I did. So kingdom relationships and community is so important. And the most vital aspect of getting back into kingdom living is the king. The king. I have a whole episode on intimacy, so I'm not going to harp on it too much. But what I will say is that, man, being with your father reminds you of who you are and reminds you not only what you can have, what you should the Bible talks about the prodigal son and he was about to go bend down and eat pig slop. And then the Bible says, and he came to himself, meaning he realized who he was. And because he realized who he was, this was no longer good enough. Some of you, the enemy has convinced you that you were somebody that you were not. And because of that, he has got you eating pig slop. But God wants to bring you back into kingdom living. And you need to remember, oh, I am better than this. I am so much better than this. I can do better than this. I remember a time in my life where things were better than this. And I want to remind you, you have a keeper in Christ Jesus. So don't fear losing this place. But in essence, Every day as we submit and surrender, there is a maintenance God is doing that we have no knowledge of in his presence of the fullness of all these things. And there are so many things in our minds and in our heart posture that God is consistently maintaining and realigning. And he's not asking us to watch over any of that. He's asking us to go after him. All right, family, that is the totality of this episode, okay? Kingdom Living. It may have a different name. I'm not sure yet, but I feel like I'm going to name it Kingdom Living. But yes, um, again, please uh, fast, uh, rewind and listen to the top so you can get all those goodies, all those great things that we have going on, as well as family. Please follow us on social media. My Facebook is at Coach Samantha Grimes, our Instagram at Samantha Grimes TV, and our YouTube channel at Samantha Grimes TV. And there's so much there from our, our Insta stories, our reels, all the good things you find out about everything we have going on. Join our email list. You'll find out about things first as well as I like to pour into my email list so um, there are times I just I'm just writing you just to pour just some nuggets and some truth and some things into your spirit as well as giving you heads up about courses programs sessions sales like you get to know all the tea first okay um, so please go ahead and check in on that all right family I love you guys and I'll talk. Oh, how do I join my email list? Go to my link tree and there is a link for joining our email list. There you go. Um, yeah. And for anything else that you are interested in. All right, family, I love you guys and I'll talk to you guys next time. All right.